is a like musical theatery sounding like phrasings like that's very like Sondheim I think what which is like this little chord I, I don't know I mean I don't know enough about music to know but I feel like this is like I saw him in the woods oh yeah <laughs> standing alone in the woods you know? <laughs> did he see you Carol no <laughs> I tried to look his way, but he turned and said goodbye. I'm sure we'll meet again one day. But how? <laughs> Maybe I will pass him on the subway and he'll look my way, but he's blind. <laughs> Maybe he can smell me or he'll sense me, but he also lost his nose in the war. <laughs> Then he'll rub up and he'll feel me. <laughs> but he lost his sense of feel. See, it ain't that hard. Come on, come on to a beautiful show. Come on and pump down some of the stuff. Now, who are you? Who am I? Have we started? We have a guy uh, <laughs> Sorry. here. We have There's a guy, guy here. here. We have a guy here. Now That's he, Jimmy Doyle. He's, he's Jimmy Doyle from season one. Mm-hmm. That's right. And season eight. Oh, eight? yeah. Eight? Uh, eight for the eight. high school reunion? Is that, was that what it was? Seven. It was seven. It was seven. French yeah. Little Beauties. Because Mac was fat. Can we, can we see Cormac's face or is his mic too high? I want to make sure we're getting yeah, all that, yeah, that, that beautiful Yeah, there mug. you go. There we go. You got it. That. I'm Hopefully. Cormac Bluestone. And- <laughs> yeah. Resident composer, <laughs> composer. of Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Yes. Long time pal. I'm so excited to be here. For I, I oh, just got to say that. I'm so excited to finally meet you. Uh, me? Yeah, you. Uh, <laughs> and I fan. just, I, you know, it's just, I, I never thought I'd be in the room with like the three of you again, just like with the pandemic and everything. And so much has changed. So yeah, yeah, yeah. This You never just, thought we'd be in a room Together again. I, I, fatalistic I think one thinking. Of us was gonna fatalistic yeah. thinking. Some, one of us was going to perish. Thinking. Yeah, I yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't want to say who, but uh, the <laughs> odds were laid. Odds were laid. That yeah. mm-hmm. We've established it wouldn't be Charlie because he's the the healthiest. Of Statistically, all of us. Well, well, no. did we? <laughs> we did. We did. I won. Uh, outright. We did. You won. You did. We didn't. I won in the sense that you win the competition and get all the points. We are here today to talk about the Night Man Cometh. Yes, we are. Which. Um, I had forgotten to watch until this morning. I was like, oh, right, I should Me watch too. it. I did the same thing. I forgot. And I was like, oh, shit. I need to. Uh, and I have to say, I thought I just knew it all. I was like, well, I know it so well. But there are lots of surprises in there. Again, I think one of the best episodes we've done. I think fans have reacted to it in that way. Let me give... Just a little information about it, just so we know. Um, of course, everybody knows there this is episode. structure. We do have we do have a we, tiny bit we, of structure. We forget about it, but there is structure to the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Now, right. Megan has insisted. <laughs> you do such a good job on this thing. Don't, I don't, don't know what this is. Don't, 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 don't come on don't here and get, get her head. Don't 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 I really it's already that. hard to get her head through the door. Okay. Well, uh, Nightman Cometh is season four, episode thirteen. It aired on November twentieth, two thousand eight, which means next year around this time it'll be fifteen years since it aired. Uh, it was written by Charlie Day, Glenn Howerton, and Rob McElhenney, and directed by Matt Shackman. And music composed by Cormac Bluestone. And Charlie Day. In Charlie so Day. many ways, it feels like it was yesterday. I feel like we just shot that. I have so many memories of shooting that episode. And it was mm-hmm. 15 years ago. But I want to talk about how that thing begins, unless you guys have got something else you want to put on the table. How the episode first. begins mm-hmm. or, or how, how we conceived of it? Both, because they're connected. Uh, yes, yes, they are. The way the episode begins, you know, I'm in the uh, in the back room, and you hear me start singing a song like "Come One, Come All" for a to a beautiful to show. a beautiful show. It's gonna, it's gonna be, be awesome and all some that other stuff. Some other musical stuff, and then you guys are icing me out, and then it's a whole conversation of why would you write a musical just to write a musical? Who is it against? What's the uh, who's the mark? <laughs> and of course, ultimately, it there is a ulterior motive in the episode, but. That came out of the fact, do you guys remember when we were oh, trying yeah. to break this episode? Oh, we had a whole, yes. there's a whole other storyline that got broken yeah, that we decided point, to Yeah, we were kicking excise. around like they were trying to like break into a bank or something for a specific reason. And the musical was a distraction while they were well, jumping back and forth doing this other thing. The other version of it was that there was a rival bar 
there was a bar that 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 we had some kind of a prank war. That's thing what it was going That's what with, it was. and they had pulled some kind of a prank on us, and we were going to pull the ultimate prank by, but we needed them out of their bar, and in order to do that, we created a musical, and that we were all in the musical, mm-hmm. because that would prove that like we couldn't have done what they're saying we did because we were all on stage and then we were going to do a whole thing where like whenever any someone was off stage, they'd be going over to the rival bar to like, so that was the ulterior motive. And then, and, and we were sort of obsessed with this idea of like, well, we can't just do a musical for no reason. Like there's <laughs> yeah, gotta right. be some other reason why yeah. we're doing it. So then we just decided, well, well, let's just write that in. I, I never knew that about what that other story, but just like, as I've been thinking about this episode, so many things like fold in on itself because I don't know if you guys remember, when we did the tour of Nightman Cometh, we showed an episode during that tour. Yep. And it was the gang reignites the rivalry, which right. sounds like that yes. storyline. Yeah, oh, you're right. I never put that together. Wow. I never thought about that because I do think that we had always had this thing in mind of like, we should have some kind of a rivalry with like a younger bar. You yeah. know, and yeah, I never put that together. That no storyline gets wasted. No. They all get done eventually. No, yeah, <laughs> one season it goes on a card, and yeah. then it, it comes out eventually. Well, it gets recycled. We'll yeah, get around to it eventually. Yeah, yeah. I was um, delighted with all the rehearsal scenes before the play. So I think what I really remembered from the episode was the play and the performance, but the rehearsals was like. Yeah, because we changed a lot of it. I, I think what's what's probably seared into our memories more than anything is the live shows because that's the most recent right. stuff that we did, even though it wasn't that far removed from shooting the episode. You know, we we had there was a whole song, uh, there's a whole uh, Nightman song mm-hmm. that uh, we had to cut from the episode because the episode was just too long. We had to mm-hmm. lose some stuff that uh, made its way into the live show. What was uh, it? It's nature, shit happens. Oh, it's, it's nature, nature. Shit, happens. shit happens. Got cut as well. Uh, My song. Troll in my hole. Oh, right. There was a, <laughs> right, right, right. There was a whole thing at the end where well, no, I we make the transformation. We something? wrote that song for the tour because we just felt we were short when we first had to perform uh, at the Troubadour. Uh, we wrote oh, but you also had that song. song. It's the opening. The song. opening song. Right, where I'm like, where I'm, he's like, you like find me your voice in it, like you ha- jump up this. I got a troll in my hole. <laughs> oh, right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah if, we could so, fi- if we could find those. in my hole. That's right. My hole of an apartment. I control your soul. That's my department. Everywhere there's trolls living. Living in your home. Right up your home. Making you eat their bowls. Make you rub their fat rolls. Rub their bowls. And all of this and more. I got got a a troll troll in my hole. I got a troll in my hole, my hole of an apartment. I control his soul. That's my department. Everywhere there's trolls living, living in your shit holes. Where they can you eat their bowls, make you rub their fat rolls, make you scrub their bowls. This and more. He's got a troll in his hole. I would love to hear from your perspective, like what what your journey was for that. Like, what was the first time we contacted you? What was the first piece of information you were given? Did we give you a script? Had first? you written music before our show? Before this episode? Never had written music. Wait, uh, what? I'd never written. I'd never watched TV before. I, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you hadn't written music. I've never picked Sunny up a before guitar. This, right? uh, yeah, I'd never written for Sonny. It was my first thing, and uh, you I had written music. I mean, oh you, yeah, you, I I was, I was totally say, writing musical yeah. theater. And Charlie came to a show. I'd been. Doing Doing a show in year, for years in New York and want to move to LA. I brought kind of the best of it, and Charlie saw the show and he was like, uh, it, "It was you know bar hoppers." Yeah. And you're like, that before you knew each other? No, this is oh, okay. we knew each other. This was in LA, like at yeah. the Saint Nick's Pub. Oh uh, my God, Saint Nick's! Saint Nick's. And uh, Charlie, after the show, was like, "Oh, that was really good. You know, we're about to do this musical episode." We were, I don't, you did not mean it this way, but you're like, we were going to hire a professional, but we should hire you. <laughs> and, uh, oh, that sounds like something Charlie would say. It does. Oh, bullshit. He would say it, no, yes. would say it in a different bullshit. way. You, yeah, that you is don't think you, I would have the sensitivity, you know, like you, not, you heard you, that I think wrong. You, I think you would word it, you would word it differently. Come on. But it, he it's did one not of those mean it that, you know, because I knew you, I think you guys had written the script, you were in pre-production for it. 
and uh, you talked to these two and uh, sent me a script. And uh, you're like, come in tomorrow, come in the Fox, and we'll sit down and go through everything. And I was like, okay, I got to take my shot. I wrote drafts of all the music, and then I came in and I recorded it on a CD. And then you and me sat in a room for, I don't know, four or five hours and kind of took all our ideas and mashed them together. I think I had, like, loose versions of some of the songs. You right? had like, really strong ideas. Like, like I listened to them. I'm like, this was all tr-. Like, Little Boy, Tiny Boy, Little Boy, you were like, oh, it's got to be song timing. And I was like, it needs a little form. Well, how do you guys How do you guys know each other? Uh, Williamstown, uh, summer of 1997. Where all of your friends come uh, from. Where all my friends come <laughs> from, yeah. It's we two, met. two apprentices, and yeah. And Hornsby was there that same summer. Hornsby, uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then right after, uh, like when I first moved to the city, I had an apartment on my own for a year and then with a, with another buddy. And then the year after I lived on Cormac's floor for uh, as long as I possibly could until they got rid, rid of me. Uh, I was like, get out. It's like there was a lot of that with you too. <laughs> well, it was a studio apartment yeah. too. It was like a room and yeah, yeah, a yeah. bathroom. Yeah. And uh, so this dude in a sleeping bag on a wood floor. <laughs> Cormac, we did a lot of jamming out, a lot of writing funny songs together. I've played, we, we've played a lot of music together. We, yeah, we played, played a lot, lot of music together. So, yeah, when we were doing it, I, I'm sure in my mind, I was like, yeah, if Cormac wants to come on and help sort of arrange these in a way that, like, I have a limitation. I'm like, I can do some chords and be like, here's a melody. Now, what, what are the nine other parts doing? <laughs> Do you yeah. remember, like, you know, in terms of the the songs and what they were about and some of the lyrics? I mean, I, we were involved in some of that, right? Like in the because it was sure, because we were writing the episode together. So, but do, but I don't remember how much how involved we Rob and I were in the in the conceiving of the lyrics of the songs. I don't know if we. I don't remember any of that because. I would imagine a lot because it's all tied in, right? Like, I mean, there's the dialogue backstage about like, you yeah. know, you're going for gasp and that's all. I think that, that was yeah, all we, we was, I remember talking about the the subjects of the songs and then they I, would go off and- I remember uh, us oh, ta- coming up with and talking about just to be clear. Yeah. Well, we were trying to figure like, out what, what would mm-hmm. be a fun song for D. Yeah. And just coming clear, off so that, funny. yeah, she would just write, just yeah, do just a song. Yeah, just literally write it. Which I definitely remember also um, a few years later, the bird, that's that's how the Birds of War was, is the same idea, which is yeah. do a song and then make the song about clarifying what the song yeah, is actually yeah, about. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> clarifying what you mean by the song. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that song I love, and also in a similar vein, the very first song that Charlie was referring to, that he comes out singing, um, Come One, Come All to a Beautiful yeah. Show. Yeah. Was that scripted or was that just you making that I don't that, think that, that was scripted, song? Come On, Come All to a Beautiful Show. Uh, I, I think the script was you came out and said, I wrote a musical. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think that was like- And yeah, like, I think, I think on the day more. you felt like it needed more pizzazz. Yeah. <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah and so you, you just- like, I, yeah, well, I think what that's can we right. do here? Um, but um, I, a couple of things, wait. Uh, I'm eating because I'm uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Is that an improv? That was an improv, right? Or was that scripted? That's like my favorite line. Of the yeah. There's a lot of baby Snickers stuff in there. Wasn't yeah. There, uh, there, there was, was, there was there, a baby I Snicker run. But, but I don't, I don't know, know if that was in the li- just in the live show or there was a baby Snickers run in the episode that we caught. Yeah, there, there was a lot in the episode I was watching last night that I thought <laughs> – I thought was I thought the, there was more in the episode yeah, than it actually yeah. is, and a lot of it we cut out and put into gag reels. A lot of it was just in the live show, and so I have this hazy memory of what the episode mm. was, and it wasn't. What one of the things I love is just how straight all those rehearsal scenes are played. Yeah, no, I'm obviously bouncing off the walls, but not in a comedic way, in a just like purely angry way. Yeah, <laughs> like. And you guys, are, it's all very natural and very small. You know? Yeah, I, I like that too. Yeah, we we all are, are all like. We're not playing it for laughs. It's like a genuine confusion about the boy's soul thing, yeah. and whether this whether the scene is about a rape, and yeah. Yeah. you know, uh, like it's it's all yeah, it's all played very grounded. Yeah. The uh, Dennis, can you take a five? Just the little detail of how you're holding your hand when you're doing that feels so specific. Oh. I'd like you to take a five. Please take a five. <laughs> I don't know why, but I remember I remember five, do, working on that. There were so many different versions of that where we just kept going back and forth. Where it's like a five. And, well, and, the it idea be, and it would be a five? a five is funny. A five only? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I, all five. All five? Uh, yeah, yeah. Please be gone for five. Um, the five of the minutes. There's so many specifics there in those rehearsal scenes, though, that feel like they're taken from, you know, 
like the kind of it people that you meet in yes. small town theater, yes. like that type. Uh-huh. Like, please, Artemis, please do not speak to the talent. Also, That's I love a was. little detail about it, Artemis when you say, I could have Artemis do the song and her head pops, and her up. Head pops <laughs> up. And she <laughs> is she's, so ready she's to ready. do it. Yeah, just that look, you know, she's dying to be in the play. <laughs> no, yes. you, that, was, that was a big impetus behind wanting to do this episode, was wanting to mess around with the dynamics of community theater, like having all yeah. come from theater. We were like, let's let's do a thing where we get to insert some of the things that we remember from the, sort of the corniness of like. I remember that's where the gum bit came from too. We're like, are you are you chewing gum? And it's like he yeah. said no gum. He he, you know no what I mean? Like the teacher's pet was always yeah, like, yeah. he said, yeah, no, he said no he gum. Said no so, gum. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Also, um, <laughs> th- yeah, those were often done with just someone playing a piano. Like that was there was no like orchestras. Like, yeah, and the woman that we got, Gladys, who plays Gladys. Was. Who then Dennis recruited to play his grandmother in the Dennis system. Oh, the yeah. Same actress. Yeah. But the, she came on and just started improving and just talking yeah. about it, whatever she was saying. And yep. it's it in was, the bloopers. Yeah. It was unbelievable. That, 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 that scene I in the bloopers. I have blo- those bloopers. If you guys want to watch those, those. Yeah, those are always just fun. <laughs> this is Gladys. She's going to be playing the piano instead of me tonight. What? Yes. And I would live through the Coolidge administration. And I never thought that I would ever be at my 99 years of age being with such beautiful people. Okay, I love that. All right, now she knows all the songs. Everything's fine, okay? Why? Why? There's a little last minute ditty that happens, okay? And so Gladys, can you just get out there and get us started, please? Ditty. I'll try. Yeah, well, don't try, just do, okay? You've been snipping at me all morning. (laughs) And you've been telling me the cool story like a hundred times. Quiet down. Trying to stay in it. Trying to stay in it. Oh, I've been through the Coolidge administration, but I never thought at my 99 years of age I would be with such beautiful people. Okay, glad we, we don't have time for like well, just go. Well, take time. Well, don't <laughs> snip at me. You've been snipping at me all morning. No, give me the shush. <laughs> Look how much fun she's having. Oh, she was amazing. Oh, what a delight. Oh, what, an oh, what an absolute delight she was. Uh, May Laborde. May. Uh, May, yes. Who played Gladys. She was born on May 13th, 1909, and oh she started gosh. her acting career at the age of 93. And the, the absolute pinnacle is her flipping through the pages when Dee sings her own song and saying, What is happening? What is happening? Best delivery of one of our most iconic lines that we've written into a thousand episodes. What is happening? It's our favorite line to write. It is our favorite star. line. If we and can... she, no one has ever delivered it better than she did. Yeah, yeah, line. yeah. I don't think. Tip no of the one. iceberg. Um, she was amazing. Descending on a sun. I stole that from Sweet and Low Down, where uh, Sean Penn descends on a moon, and it's a great right. sequence where you know he he wants to, you know, he's making this big deal about like he's going to descend on this moon. And then he gets like, he, he's really proud of it. And then the stagehand comes by and he's like, that's ah, a hell of a drop, man, could break his neck. <laughs> you know, and then he gets like nervous and his, his descend is so like, but I, I was watching that because I, I couldn't remember if we, if I did drop down or, or if I didn't. You we did. cut away, but we like cut away and we cut, we cut away so there. quick. Yeah. I but know I know that we do. I think I'm coming down on it. Yeah. You see it for like half a yeah. shot. I think you're strapped to it. So you had to cut. Oh, to, to get unstrapped. unstrapped. Yeah, you get right, unstrapped right. and then come yeah, off. Yeah, that's what it was. A technical thing. So remember there was a big debate about uh, whether we would sing this live while recording it or we would right. lip sync to pre-recorded versions of the song. Right. And that was one of my first things I think I said when I came on because I had so much experience and stuff. I was like, we got to do it live. And it was so funny when we did it, uh, it. It's just so much harder to do it live. No one ever does it. Our playback guy... On the episode, you gotta have a click track. You gotta have those, like, yeah. you gotta make sure that the rhythm is the same in every. Those take hair pieces and, are really expensive too. It's tough so, editing wise. Yeah, the playback guy, he had a couple Emmys. He did like the Scrubs musical, the Drew Carey musical, and he kept saying to me, "What are you guys doing? You do the pre-records and you lip sync. This is ridiculous." And during editing, I was getting calls like, "They don't know what to do with any of this. How does this all go together?" Blah blah blah. What we cut together was a mixture. Yeah. Of of us singing live when we were filming and the pre recorded stuff. As I recall, we 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 spent a tremendous amount of time. Well, the they mixers built like a spent little a tremendous booth. amount of time. Like, yeah. Yeah. But the 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 live performance aspect of it is what makes it so funny. Like if it was polished, 
Yeah. It wouldn't be funny. It's the fact that it's unpolished and, you know, people are singing off key and like- uh, right. In those musicals that you're talking about, the episode itself becomes a musical mm -hmm. versus, right? So the Scrubs, yes. for example. Yeah. And you would need that to be polished. And we've done versions of that on this particular show, but this where you're putting on a performance, you have to do it live. Right? I, I think Otherwise, almost every seems, single- It seems Well, I think these were the exact conversations we were having. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, See, this is why we, we don't hire right. a professional. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Have you figured out that first Christmas present yet? Well, look no further than down. That's right, down there at your underwear. Are you telling us to give people our underwear as a gift? Because that seems... No, I'm saying get, get them a new pair from me undies. Could I give some of my current undies if they are me undies? Why, why, why would you even ask that? Well, uh, because in my experience, me undies are the absolute snuggliest, most comfortable undies in the game. Maybe I'm sporting a pair the recipient doesn't have yet, right? I don't think that they'll want your old undies once they get their new undies. Um, plus, me undies holiday collection also has bralettes and PJ sets, holiday sweater prints, classic plaids for dads, and the softest loungewear ever in sizes XS through XL. What if I am the recipient? Well, Glenn, this year you're in luck because me undies is encouraging you to do holiday your way. And if your way is gifting yourself a bunch of underwear, more power to you. Just dispose of your old underwear responsibly. Mm. Okay, Glenn, we'll talk oh, What about does that it. mean? Sell it on eBay. Ah. To get 20% off your first order, free shipping, and 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to meundies.com slash sunny. That's meundies.com slash sunny. Guys, I have an announcement. He's an announcement. Glenn's got an announcement. It's a medical announcement from our friends at Raycon. Oh. Do you or a loved one suffer from chew volume anxiety, CVA? It's a very serious condition that does not get talked about enough, but deserves to be, especially with the holidays coming up. When you want to block out the sound of annoying relatives chewing their food or oh, wow. chewing your head off about your life choices, we here at the Always Sunny Podcast recommend that you drown them right out with a sporty new pair of Raycon wireless earbuds. I can personally attest that uh, Raycons are the perfect gift for anyone in need of drowning out uninhibited chewers, okay? Even if it's a gift for yourself. Watch, here, watch this. So pop these in here. Right. Uh -huh. yeah. There we go. Um, now. Ready, Rob? Yeah, I'm ready. Why don't ready. you guys pop? I'll you... mm -hmm. smack it. You okay? I'm smacking. Are you guys pantomiming or are you yeah. actually making noise? Plus, you, as the gift giver, will love that they start at half the price of other premium audio brands. So go ahead. Take a look at the holiday bundles for the fitness lover or gamer or CVA sufferer in your life. Which you can find in Kohl's or Walmart. Yeah, but why not try, uh, you know, just buying them from us, uh, your trusty friend. So uh, right now you can go to buyraycon.com slash sunny to get 20% off. Or you could uh, you could save even bigger and get 30% off Raycon's exclusive holiday bundles. That's buyraycon.com slash sunny for 20% off your Raycon purchase. Buyraycon.com slash sunny. My little black sailor's cap that I wear is a homage to... Uh, when I was in college and I decided I want to start doing plays, there was a theater club, not a program. There was like a club and they did plays in like a church basement. And the guy who ran it was a guy named Tom Kirkman. And uh, he, he, I, like, he used to be a priest, but he wasn't a priest anymore. And, uh, or maybe he still was, I don't know. But um, lovely guy. I really appreciate him putting me in plays and, and you know, uh, but he always wore a, like a little sailor's cap. Like that was like yeah. his thing. And he wore boots and he would go, he would breathe through his teeth like after rehearsal and he would go, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Magic. <laughs> you know, like, that was his style. Anyway, it's not, the story fizzles out, but a little, a little tip to old Tom Kirkman. So I owe him a no, debt of like gratitude. That. What would troll toll? Where did that come from? Well, both Troll Toll and Tiny Baby Boy <clears throat> came a little bit from the musical I used to do with Hornsby, Paperboy. Uh, so up at Williamstown, Hornsby and I used to improv this musical about a Paperboy movie. Oh, yeah, City. I remember this. And Tiny Boy was loosely based on a song called, like, uh, Happy Thoughts that he and his 
or kind of funny thoughts. He like starts, he gets a girlfriend and he's having kind of funny thoughts. And then the, the song gets darker and darker where they're like, you know, like maybe we could also get a ski mask and rob a bank and kind of the funny thoughts, you know? And then like, if we, we'll shoot the cleric. They're like, yeah, let's shoot the cleric. And, you know, uh, it's playing against like a sweet song. And then Troll Toll was the same, like uh, where he, Jimmy the paper boy winds up in a bad part of town and he's just like, oh, it's homeless people. Who uh, was the first one who realized that whole and soul, when boys whole and boys soul, who who put that? that together first? I, I, soul and whole sound. I yeah. think I, I remember us talking about that in the writers' room for sure. That was definitely something that uh, yeah that was like a big laugh in the in yeah. the writers' room. Seems like a Martyr and Roselle thing. That is such a funny one. I mean that. I mean. I, 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 you watch this episode. It's like one of those episodes. You're like, this is from that episode. This is from that episode. Yes. This is from. That. It's just like wall to wall. The jokes, um, the songs, the musical. It's great, but like, there's just so much from this episode. The audience that we had in there. I believe we discussed this before. Oh my god! Who, they, who was that audience? Wasn't an audience of people who had no and they'd never heard of the show, seen the show. They thought maybe they were there to watch a play, an actual play. I don't know, but we—I don't think we warned them. We just did it, and I think there was a lot of confusion. Yeah, a lot of confusion. <laughs> right. there, nobody see. found it funny. <laughs> They were, like, no. they were being forced to laugh. Imagine if you had no context for what it was that you were about to watch, and then yeah. all of a sudden, uh, <laughs> that was the play that was presented to you. Yeah, I think we did run it from start to finish, we right? Did. Yes. So we just over and over. We just performed the play, <laughs> and then it is what it is. And then we did pickups later, and we shot it like like a live show, basically. Yeah. And then we went in for coverage yeah. and shot each moment and each scene like kind we would in a normal that. episode. That was all shot. As I recall. Did you, those cat eyes, I, you can't see a goddamn thing. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah, in the you live show, you see. just painted your eyelids, That's right? right? Because you can't see with those cat eyes. You yeah. can't see anything. Oof. And they, they, they're they just they scratching hurt. your eyes. The whole, they hurt. You couldn't yeah. see through them? So you, they give you just a tiny little eye hole so you can kind of get this out. But really, it just feels but like there's something around, scra- so Yeah, it moves around. And it feels like it's just scratching your eye the whole time. So I or remember that. when we did Troll Toll, I'd written this like little bass line that you came in with. And you're like, dum, dum. Mm-hmm. And you had to talk and snap at the same time. And I remember. <laughs> Dude, you were, you were struggling with that, I remember. Oh, I'm sure. But talk yeah. and snap? Well, also, you, you wanted him to snap, but don't. Uh, yes. Uh, no, no, and I was like in between. Uh, and you were doing down. But what's so great about Cormac is da, 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 da. he's so patient. He's yeah. so patient. So for an hour, I, I'm just, I'm trying to do this thing. And he's like, you're doing great. You're doing great. There's no way I'm doing great after an hour. And Glenn's just like, Jesus Well, that's so Christ, funny man. because I remember every time that song would start, I'd be off stage, like going really big yeah, to help yeah, you yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you're stage momming him. That's yeah, stage momming him. Well, here I am 14 years later. I realized you couldn't see me. I'm just like, you know, <laughs> doing this for the crew. I, no, like, but just knowing you were there made me feel better. Also, you, you you had to write like, oh, that's so funny. I remember you writing that whole bump, bump, ba da da, and then then you had to do a very specific thing just to get Danny into the song, which was like, dum 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 dum, like yeah. like here it is coming your time to start singing. <laughs> yes, 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 I did. I do remember that. Yeah, because he never knew when to come in. Well, I remember I'd written like a draft of Troll Toll. It was this loungy thing, and you're like, no, 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 it's got to be like you got da 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 da. Like, and I was like, oh yeah, we're doing this for Danny. And I was like, oh, it's like a little blues thing. But of course, it just put all the onus on Danny. Like like so many of the songs are just lyric, 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 <laughs> lyric, lyric, lyric. You know, it's just like jam-packed wall to wall. But yeah, he on the tour every night he would hit that. But we'd have the whole band, like just guys, four, and everyone just go, one, two, three. <laughs> you gotta get that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I want to get into all the music because, as as you pointed out, Cormac, this there's so much in this episode to get to, and um, to that end, I was really nervous that I wouldn't ask all the questions that, like a big fan of this episode uh, would ask. So, are you guys ready for the super fan I, to yeah, ask you I'm all excited. his questions? You're gonna have to sing up. the songs. Though. Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> all right, uh, we'll just bring out our our super fan, um, Lin Manuel Miranda. <laughs> Hey, man. Nice to meet you. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. 
Oh, holy God. shit. Ah, yeah, yeah, no, what a treat. <laughs> I love it. Are you, like stuff? <laughs> Are you familiar with musicals? Oh, with my the goodness theater? gracious. Do you have any sort of sense Long of time, first time. <laughs> Happy to be here. Um, yes, I love this episode. <laughs> um, and I have so many questions. I'm so glad we have the composer here, too. Wait, we have to talk about you for a minute. No, we don't. Uh, really. No. I have to talk I'm, about oh, you for okay. a minute. Uh, <laughs> so I saw Hamilton. We were talking about Hamilton yesterday. 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 Yes, we it was were. so exciting. We were talking about it yesterday. And I was looking over at Meg and was like, oh, this is going to be so now, you, guys, you guys knew, <laughs> the so I didn't know. Yeah, I had no idea you were going to be here. And I yeah, was yeah, saying, like, like, if you didn't see it w- without Lynn Manuel playing, you didn't see the music. <laughs> like, uh, and so I'm, I'm there and we're in New York and we're watching the play and like, I'm looking at, at you and you're like performing. I'm like, I feel like this dude's looking right at me, but I'm like, he can't, he can't, he can't, <laughs> can't see me. me. <laughs> He can't see me. No, I took my cat eye lenses out. Yeah, 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 yeah. cat eye out, man. And then when uh, it came time for the bow, you were doing the bow, and the whole place was going nuts. I was blown away, as of course. And you you point at me and Mary Elizabeth, and you go, "Holy shit, Charlie and the waitress." Yeah, you and said it like, during. He I said like it. said it in the bow, was like on stage, <laughs> like, like everybody else. I, I was like, like there's well, 13, like, 1,400 other people there, and on my way, and I was like, oh, Charlie and the waitress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, you From left, on stage. And then we went backstage, and we saw you, and you were amazing, and yeah. and uh, you love John Bon Jovi waiting. That guy had the wait. It's like <laughs> Bo Bon Jovi. Bo Bon Jovi. I think that's who it was. Yeah. Richard turned Bo Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Obama. Everyone had to wait. <laughs> if I had more presence of mind, I would have turned to you and said, I was that baby boy, oh, that yeah, little yeah, yeah. baby yeah, yeah. boy was me. Uh, <laughs> I was a man. Well, so that's so what you guys saying that we you inspired you, I we think is where we're yeah. getting that's to. Where is that right? Yeah. Okay. Never heard this of is the snake before. eating its tail this episode <laughs> right now. <laughs> I came to thank you for all of that. <laughs> all the inspiration, yeah. Yes, indeed. Well, uh, the nice thing about you being here, Lynn, is that you can answer once and for all. Um, does anyone write a musical for no reason? Mm. Uh, or is it always versus? Yeah, no, it's always versus. Yeah. What's the con? The, the long the con angle? for Hamilton. And it was a six-year grift. Um, no. Um, <laughs> Who were you writing that versus? <laughs> Who was it versus? I guess but, Jefferson? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. I wanted to ask you guys about your history with theater and musical theater. Because I know for me it was like... That was the place where I found any crust of cool in high school. And it was the place like where like I could exist outside my grade and I could mm-hmm. exist like I, you could collaborate on something that was not just like the drudgery and horror of high school. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I was wondering, and then, you know, you guys have chops. I was watching the live episode on the way here and the whole inside my apartment bonus song where you're just like, wailing like yeah freddie mercury like <laughs> you guys have to have done musicals in school i did a lot of musicals I did. Yeah. yeah i want i want to hear the entire biography. list I, yeah i want to hear yeah i did a bunch of like really random musicals that most people have never heard of i did a musical called uh star mites oh wow do you, do you know this it's musical? like that's like a very cult flop musical. yeah yeah yeah, 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 I, don't, yeah I don't know yeah. it i did a music called celebration it was written by the same uh, uh team that wrote uh, the fantastics uh-huh henrik and a little night music oh shit um that was by far the hardest yeah uh, i i ever because i had to i had to play the cello while singing an extraordinarily difficult song yeah but i had Sometimes to act like i was hardest. playing the cello along to, and i was like oh my god yeah I, it was it was it was crushingly difficult. Um, yeah, there's some harder than uh, the Nightman Cometh. Much harder than yeah. <laughs> and, and Charlie, what's your musical background? Because uh, to me, your musical background ah, these things just make sense to me. <laughs> well, okay, so Kinda. both my parents Which is one of the best. <laughs> both my parents are music teachers. Yeah, my mom taught like kindergarten through eighth grade, and my dad like I was a college professor. And um, growing up, I remember my mom doing some productions of. Of she she put on like HMS Pinafore oh, wow. and the Mikado and mm. um and the Wiz and I was too young to be in these things but I remember like the eighth grade kids were doing these plays and I would see them so I was introduced to it then in second grade we did a uh, James when you say, the, sorry when you say she put on she was like the musical director of the it. school so okay. like you know she was a music teacher like you, yeah. you're going to Mrs Day's class for kindergarten through eighth grade yeah. right. So then uh, I did a I did James the Giant Peach and we did a musical version and I sang that song like Smile though your heart is breaking or whatever. Yeah. So the first time I like had to like sit and like do a song, and then I didn't do shit until high school, 
my senior year, which I did South Pacific. But you were playing, but you were playing music. I mean, you were. Oh uh, yeah. I, I started like, I kind of rebelled against it. And then like, once I got into high school, I picked up the guitar, started writing little things. And then but you started, that wasn't your first instrument. You were, were you playing like trumpet oh, or something? Yeah. I had some piano lessons, which I ditched at 10. I played trombone. Trombone. And then I was. ditched trombone. And then uh, I picked up the guitar and I sort of half Sexy. learned that. And then back to the piano. But um, then I get to college and I do um, Sondheim's Into the Woods. Yeah. And I, I'm just like the guy who goes like, the slotted spoon can catch the potato. Were you the narrator? Nope. Just like a guy, like a just dad. a guy? Like just a, a walk- dad, yeah. yeah. Uh, but then I started like, do you remember the Bravo channel? Like, um, of course. Before it was all before this reality it- show, they would play plays. Yeah. And they, yeah. they had right. Into the Woods on there a lot. It was like on a lot. And I would like get home after like hanging out with my buddies and I'd make myself like a gin and tonic <laughs> and I would watch like- <laughs> Into the Woods. Into the Woods. I was like, God, this is so good. I didn't think I liked this before and I really like it now. And so, I don't know. It's like, I've had a long relationship with musicals, but also never really been a part of them. Like never done one professionally. Yeah. Don't have a huge desire to kind of like, like and don't like them. <laughs> yeah, that's so. most people's relationship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can we talk about right. Stephen Sondheim for a second? Because yes. um, I, I, he's been referenced so many times on this podcast. We talked about him yesterday. Mm-hmm. I know he was a friend of yours, a mentor of yours. Wait, uh, you knew him? Yeah. Oh God. And he he just passed this past year. Correct? Mm-hmm. Past November. Yeah. Wow. Um, what? And I I think our audience would probably I don't know how how. Um, big of fans of uh, musicals our audience is, but I, I know Stephen Sondheim only from what I've heard about him from you guys. And I've watched musicals my, my whole life, but I never realized what a like m- massive uh, piece of musical theater Stephen Sondheim has like given to this culture, correct? He was like, he's yeah. a- he's Yeah, a, it, I don't know what the analog would be in another, it would be like, Scorsese for film, or it would be Spielberg for film. Like he just redefined it mm-hmm. on his terms. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing about one of the most remarkable things I think about Stephen Zahnheim's career is that his mentor was Oscar Hammerstein II. Like adopt, not like only mentor, but adopted dad. His his mom dropped him off at Oscar Hammerstein's house. They were neighbors, mm-hmm. and he was just like, I don't want to leave. Don't make me go back to my mom. Can I hang out with you? And he always said, if Hammerstein were a butcher, I'd be a butcher. Um, so mm-hmm. he's mentored by like half of Rodgers and Hammerstein, mm-hmm. yeah. but his shows are totally different. You know, Rodgers and Hammerstein wrote like Oklahoma and South Pacific mm-hmm. and these Sound of Music, like these very like wholesome, you know, it, it kind of defined what musical theater was, but they were also these very naturalistic Musicals and Sondheim took that and wrote Sweeney Todd about a homicidal barber or mm-hmm. a presidential assassin musical. And he just, you know, I, I think the, the lesson of Sondheim's career is one, first of all, it's like variety, like he never repeated himself. And two, he just never, he, he always just kind of took what you would say is like, that can't be a musical. And he would turn that into like the best musical, mm-hmm. um, which that, of course brings us back to the Nightman. Coming. <laughs> yeah, do you think that yes. coincides with like the seventies, just in general, like what film was doing? You know, where you have like the movies of the fifties, and you have a lot of happy endings, or you know, a much more kind of big polished thing. And then the seventies, people start being like, actually, the guys just go on a motorcycle ride across the country, and then they're shot to death. You know I, what I mean? Like, I think it it really was a reflection of who he was. One of the things. Oscar told him in one of his early musicals, he started showing Oscar stuff when he was like 15 years old, um, was you're trying to write like me, don't write like me. If you write what interests you, like mm-hmm. you'll be ahead of everybody else. Mm-hmm. That was his big advice to mm-hmm. young Stephen Sondheim. How do you feel about that? I mean, do you, do you, do you probably agree with that sentiment, sentiment clearly? I mean, I know that, that that for us was always our guiding principle was, you know, let's just do what we think is, is funny and hope that other people like it, you know, because it's our best shot at making something original since there's only us, you know, we're, we're the only people that could conceive of something that only we can conceive of, so let's do that, yeah. you know? To bring it back to The Nightman Cometh, and you're talking about pursuing just kind of what you love and, and making that to keep things original. What's interesting to me about this is it's a musical that you guys made, and you 
usually, I imagine you workshop musicals in front of audience, so you have some idea of how they're <laughs> yeah. going to hit once you get to like the big venues. But you guys made and recorded a musical and released it to the world in its fully finished form, the only way that it will ever exist. And I, I have a follow-up question about this, because it also <laughs> emerged on what looks like the most insane chicken scratch pile of paper, <laughs> paper. and then gets translated by Artemis <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> into English. Uh-huh. Uh, she added words, in the, as yeah, they say. Yeah, yeah. She added words. So <laughs> I'm curious, well, I'm curious how you guys workshop the musical among yourselves. Like, how do you find... Well, boys I, hole, boys hole. I mean, the beauty of what we're doing is like, you have an absolute bailout parachute with a joke, right? Which means we don't have to do anything in earnest, which means that we can fall right flat on our face. Like, yeah, sure, there's a piece of me that is always like, yeah, I'd like to write a musical. That'd be fun. I don't have the guts and balls to actually write a musical and put it in front of the world. But if I write a musical that's a joke about musicals, then I'm right. safe, right? <laughs> and and kind of like our our show is such a good sort of like um practice like play box for uh, sandbox, like playground for kind of trying things, which is like, I'd like to write a David Bowie-esque rock song. I can mm-hmm. do it on our show. Or like, I want to try an English accent, but it's a, it, it can be bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like... Yeah. I do have a question about the English accent, which is your accent as the Nightman. It's very David Bowie and Labyrinth to me. <laughs> oh. oh. Here's your troll. I never picked up Here's your troll troll. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea. I'm just trying to keep up. <laughs> I'm just trying to keep yeah. up. I can't remember. <laughs> there's, something quiet, all... there's something quiet about it that's very like, David Bowie as Gareth. Well, love, here's your toll troll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's what you mean now. Yeah. That's what I was going for. Yeah. Yeah. I was going for Bowie and Labyrinth. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, do you want to write another musical? Are you? Are you is that? A whole yeah, thing? he's yeah. always writing. I'm, I'm always, always writing. writing. You're never yeah. gonna not write musicals. Yeah, that's. I I've worked really hard to get good at it, <laughs> <laughs> and so I want to keep yeah. doing it. And but keep. but the thing is always like finding the idea that pursue, pursues you. Like it can't just be, you know, I've, I've written ideas where I've, I've written my way t- and I go, oh, I, I think I'm done. Like I'm not mm-hmm. interested in c- pursuing this anymore. Mm. Um, that's what's so kind of beautiful about this episode is you can tell in, I mean, just in the context of the story, Charlie was possessed by an idea mm-hmm. and he saw it yeah. through. To, like he actually did something very impressive. And the the side of Charlie that this unlocks in the episode, like when he is screaming at D. I yes. mean, we have never yeah. seen Charlie yeah. like that. Full theater that. tyrant. Full yes. the, So full theater explain theater. to me where the full theater uh, tyrant yeah. came well, from because- well, uh, I think that's just a funny concept. But he's like, just so powerful. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, and Charlie's never really powerful. But don't you feel like that's a dynamic that happens in the theater? Like, I'm sure, Glenn, you've seen it, like, in the Juilliard days where it's just, like, this extreme tension about this ridiculous thing that people are doing. Mm-hmm. But also underneath it, I feel he, like he's, he's trying I, to get this girl to marry him. And, his, and he's got IQ, everything yeah. riding on it. Yeah. You know right. what I mean? Like, right. he's like, I, I need this play to be good. It's your last shot. Because it's my last shot. I'm going to propose to this yeah. woman. There's moments where your IQ goes up 100 points. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like yeah, when he goes, true. turn the page over. Like, what is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah, that's what you'll say. Yes. <laughs> like, that yes. is brutal. Yeah. Is that? This, uh, yeah. this I want to play this section. Okay. He's in his full zone. Charlie, this is my big song. Yeah. Everybody else has a big song. I deserve to have one. Do you? Don't screw me like this. Don't screw you. Oh, I'm sorry, D. Um, Look at you and wringing your hands. Uh, let's see, was it, did D write a musical and, and come to Charlie with it? No! Charlie wrote a musical and came to D with it. And the gang. And the gang likes to screw it up and make it about themselves and take it away from Charlie sure, it's and ruin his hopes and dreams. That. So let me tell you something, D. Let me break down a scenario for you. I could cut the song, okay, because I wrote it. I could have <laughs> Artemis do the song, okay, because so you did not write it. Or Check. I could strap out a wig and I could do the song myself. So you tell me, little miss, all that. <laughs> what do you want to do? A song or no song? Like a funny thing happens when you're doing a scene like that where, like, I'm just screaming at Caitlin, right? <laughs> and I feel her feeling screamed at. Like, I can feel her starting to be like, well, he is, whether it's the actor or the character, this man is sc- fucking screaming at me. Yeah. And I can't, like, soften that blow. I can't be like, all right, well, let me back it off a little bit because she's getting upset. Like, I got to stick in it. So, like, I have to, like, turn the nice side of my brain off. That's funny because you're giving her exactly what she needs as an actor by doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
I know. And yet in I your know. mind, you're like, I'm upsetting her. I know, like, I know. But you know then there's I mean? a side of you where you're like, this but, is abusive in a way. But. Yeah. But of course, in Caitlin's mind, she's like, oh, this is great. Like, is it, I, I am getting screamed at. I, and that's how I'm supposed to be reacting. <laughs> yeah, so it's a yeah, genuine yeah, reaction. She, she plays it great. There's nothing more abusive than the level of stalking that goes on in this particular episode. Stalking? Yes. Uh, stalking the waitress? Of the waitress. Yeah. Oh and God. even in even in the end, when you're like, well, I'm coming yeah, um, yeah. I didn't sign anything, so I'm coming back tomorrow. That is sinister. It's that's completely it's truly it's sinister. sinister. <laughs> completely wrong. And, yeah. and yet people have really used that song as a proposal song. I've seen YouTube <laughs> no. videos of people literally proposing in we real gotta, life using that. We gotta that. put that in the podcast. Yeah, that's yeah. I will. I'd like to I'll see a few of right those. As you were saying, you wrote it with this out, which is it's supposed to be funny. It's not supposed to be that good. And yet everybody loves it. They love the songs. Like you you somehow looped around again to create something that isn't a joke, that yeah. is genuinely I mean, this is the power of music, man. I, I'm yeah. sure you have experienced this, is that it, it reaches people beyond what, uh, now I'm doing the George Bush thing. It reaches, <laughs> it, it's reaching you to your soul. Uh, I don't know. It can just tap it like that. I yeah. was, it was, I didn't know anything about, uh, Hamilton when I when I went to go see it. I just heard it was a hit. Uh, I didn't know anything about you. I went to go see it. And, you know, 10 minutes into the play, I'm like, okay, oh, it's like a, we're, we're rapping, right? Like, this is new. <laughs> it's like 10 minutes into the rapping. Yeah, then by, <laughs> and then by the end, like, it was a completely... Oh, it's primal. It's primal. It's so primal. Yeah, it was like, it hits uh, you in a that hit me in a, in a way that very few pieces of art actually have. And, like, just something about the power of combining music to whatever, like if you nail it right, I don't know. It just I know it's, it, it hits so you in a totally different way. Even in yeah. our goofy kind of like, hey, we're doing a silly bad musical, the songs stick with people. But you know, it's resonate. funny because I'm so allergic to meta musicals. Like, there's they're their own genre where they're like, we're commenting on the fact we're doing a musical. Isn't it so hilarious that mm -hmm. we are breaking into song? Um, I kind of generally hate that shit. Yeah, like, yeah. I'm just like, right. stop apologizing for the thing you clearly love uh -huh. to do. Yeah. But <laughs> that doesn't right. that doesn't come across in this episode like what comes across is that charlie earnestly this show came out of him and he's mm -hmm. using it of course for sinister ends but it doesn't ever feel like you guys are commenting that musicals are bad no it feels like uh charlie is inept at making what he wants to have happen yeah happen and like the vanity of your characters is always gonna upend you stage freeze don't say stage freeze. <laughs> right <laughs> do the it. joke isn't <laughs> the joke isn't that musicals are bad the joke is that we're bad at doing them yes yeah, <laughs> yeah. Know? yeah. And, and, and that you sabotage job. yourself yeah, yeah we're not we making want fun of, well. of the show but no itself. you guys we, are working your ass yeah. off like when 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 the nightman comes out and he's he's finally doing his earnest awesome karate and they're laughing he's like, Oh, yeah, it's, so it's, funny. it's such a dejected little aside. I, I also love a, the little moment where Dennis is backing up to grab the gun, and you you don't want to turn around and grab it because <laughs> yeah. you, know, you want it to be subtle. So right. what you do is you flail around behind around you for, it, for yeah. someone holding it like just uh, through the door for you. That's a little detail. I think that again it brings up like it invokes such high school productions, and it's mm -hmm. so nostalgic to watch. Like even the sets and the way that the couch is painted on to the yep. wall and the yeah. everything. It just has, and then contrasting that with the subject matter that you're talking about. <laughs> it's uh, so is, dark. <laughs> it's so dark. Do you write on piano? When yeah. you go, you sit on a piano and you- Yeah, I, don't, I, I can't play trombone. I can't play. <laughs> you don't write on trombone? I don't write on trombone. Uh -oh. No, I, I only ever learned piano. I took piano lessons as a kid. And so oh, yeah. I, I have my keyboard hooked up to my computer and I use, I, use, I wrote in the Heights like on GarageBand, like use wow. that to arrange it. And then- uh, graduated to logic <laughs> for right. the subsequent shows. Can we talk about your process for a little bit? Because um, I found it fascinating. When we were we, we were in New York, we went out to dinner and we went to see a comedy show. And then um, you were like, I got to get home because I found this fascinating. He said this to me at dinner. He said, I can't stay out too late tonight because I got to get home because my boss is expecting me to deliver a song by the end of the day tomorrow. 
and I thought he was joking. And I laughed, and he was very serious. And I was like, "Who's your boss?" <laughs> right, right. <laughs> serious. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he was like, "But you were you were yeah. earnest insofar as you had to deliver this to your boss." And I was like, "Who's your who's, boss?" Who could have his boss and it's the head of be. music at Disney. Mm -hmm. What's his name? Who's also a my friend? buddy Tom McDougal. Yeah, yeah. He runs he runs music for Disney, and I was writing a, a song on uh, for an assignment for him. Yes, yeah. and. And I just found that fascinating because uh, to me, if there's any artist in the world living right now who doesn't have a boss, it's you. <laughs> <laughs> However, I, but I found it interesting. That, first of all, obviously you're respectful of somebody who's paying you, you're a professional, paying you and they have an expectation of delivery. But beyond that, it almost felt like you enjoyed the constraint of knowing that you had to get something done. Mm. Yeah. Is that a part of your process? Yes, I think this says more equal amount about you that it does about me, that you are fixated on my having a boss. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> you're like, well, I'm I instantly <laughs> resentful of anyone who would call themselves my boss. Yes. Oh, yeah. Glad I thought we were yes. Rob's boss. Yeah, aren't you? Yeah. We yeah, are, yeah, we, we just are. don't. You just don't. Yeah. 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 I don't want to trigger anything. You don't have to say yeah. it. Yeah. I love a deadline. I love a deadline. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's what I love. And um, when, I'm, when I'm working on something to know that we're going to meet about what I write every week, that's the best way for me to get anything done. That was mm -hmm. how... And the Heights got written, how Hamilton got written. You know, I, when I started writing Hamilton, I was, took me a few months to write the opening song, took me a year to write the second song, which wow. was oh half just like not writing the song and, and half just me not committing to finishing it. And it wasn't until Tommy Cale got involved and was like, let's just put a date where you're going to perform as many songs from Hamilton as you can. And that, and we'll just commit to that, like seven months from now. And I wrote eleven songs, mm -hmm. so that that tells me that like I need a deadline mm -hmm. to yeah. get anything. Yeah, done. because then you can just keep chipping away at something. At a certain point, you're like, okay, I have to move on. And only when you've moved on from it can you go back to it and be like, oh, it's not as bad as I thought it was, or it's even better. Yeah, and also I'm sure you guys are familiar with this. Like my favorite part of the process wh when I'm working on a musical is bringing the song in and then being like, all right, like here it is, like guts out. Like what do we think? What's confusing? What could be better? What did you like? What didn't make sense? And and I'm sure that's how you guys work too in terms of like- It, it is, and this, I think this is a great lesson for young artists and people who are trying to get into, into creating anything is the idea of iteration. Um, we mm -hmm. talk about this quite a bit, which is uh, oftentimes people are afraid to put out, to show people what it is that they're working on yeah. at early stages because they yeah. want to perfect it, mm -hmm. not realizing that there is no perfection. And like uh, so much a part of a, any collaborative art is to get other people's opinions. And if you don't put that, if you don't have either an external uh, party who's putting on that limitation or, or those guardrails of saying, we need it by this date, then, then you have to do it internally and right. just say, look, by this date, I'm gonna show it to people. And there's no, that's not a failure if someone says, oh, that's pretty good, but what if you tried yeah. this or what if you mm -hmm. tried that? That's all a part of the process. And even the, the people who are the greatest in the world at it, like to hear that, I think like an audience member to hear that, that you also fear that, and oh, also yeah. will sit down yet at an early stage and show it to somebody and take notes, I think is really inspiring. Yeah. You say <laughs> the price of my war. Ooh. Now that one, that fucking number, which is so fuck, all that, that the King's numbers are so good. Did those come quickly, writing wise? Or? Those came away from the piano. So those yeah, came yeah. as like a tune in my head. Mm -hmm. I was actually on my honeymoon when I wrote King George's song. Really? Yeah, I was on an island in the South Pacific with my wife. There was not a piano anywhere. Now, how do you do that? It's just in your head? I, well, I think the reason it's so catchy, and again, like your own bullshit becomes a part of your process. Like mm. for me, I don't have very good piano chops. So a melody has to survive my chops, <laughs> ah. you know? And so like that song was so catchy, it had to survive the two weeks I was on vacation and stay in my head. And I wrote down the words as like, I, like I put words to the melody once it was in my head. And they were pretty close to what the final words would be, but I just sang it to myself, and it Did was you take a video. And it or had a... to survive. No, no, I just had, it just had to survive, and and I think that's why it's the catchiest song in the no, show. Like it was just stuck in my head for two weeks. But this is an interesting song to write on your honeymoon because it's about a very dysfunctional relationship. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, but it's also a breakup song. That's yeah. true. That's true. Like it's it's actually a breakup song. It's like no, you'll you'll be back. Yes. You're stuck with me. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe we, we, let's not look too deeply into that. Yeah, it's a perfect song. I, like every now and then I'll, it won't even be on. I'll just like start singing it. I don't know why. It's just in there. It's, yeah, it's, it's in there. It's, it's in there for life now, I think. 
Yeah, I mean, that's I, how I, a lot of us feel about the Nightman coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, it's trying so... to get it right in that skull where it stays forever. Yeah, yeah. yeah you um, do have a knack. Charlie does have a knack for writing very catchy melodies or like catchy, catchy things that just grab you right away. Like it could have been a good commercial jingle, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> the the lyrics too, I think, are so catchy, and almost because they're so not specific. Like I'm thinking specifically of the last song, um, "If you want to marry men, will you marry me?" Like the little <laughs> yes. things that are added in. Yeah. Like it's that. not even well, men. It's, I mean, it's man. If you want to marry men, man. man. if you want to marry men. So those it things. Could be. When you wrote that, did you mean like were you calling were you calling her man like Both. if you want to marry men? <laughs> Both. Or, or was it like, or if you want, want to, to marry, marry man? I knew it would be funny as both. I am man. And like, it's also like a bad lyric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. like, it's calling her man, which is also weird. Yeah. Please say but yes, also like, do not bone me. Yeah, do, do not, not bone, bone me. me. What, what I love is that it's, it, the beginning has like the rigorousness of like a Bach cantata. There's like a chord for every note. It's like dun, 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 dun. It just gets, it's like very like fugue, like almost. And then it goes to the like craziest hard rock play. It's like da, 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 da. <laughs> That's because we don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Today, Creeps and Listeners, we are supported by Athletic Greens and their delicious five-star, lifestyle-friendly green powder, AG1. All right, you know what? I, I can start this time. Have you guys ever counted uh, all the way up to 75? To se- 75? Like just, what do you mean? Just because? Well, yeah, I guess there's a reason. That's because that's the number of uh, high-quality vitamins, minerals, whole food source, superfoods, probiotics, and adaptogens in AG1. You know, um, I'll be honest with you guys. Hearing 75 of all of those things every time we advertise for Athletic Greens, it kind of becomes like this uh, sort of amorphous blob of a number. But, you know, when you break it down and, 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 and count it out one by one, I mean, that is – that 75 is a lot of nutrients. Yeah, and they're all together in one place, all together in one place. And it's hard hard to get any group of any size together in one place. It's hard enough to get the four of us together in one place. Uh, yeah, no, it is. Uh, that's why we have to do this remote thing. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash sunny. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash sunny to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Things just make sense to him. Yeah. yeah, it just makes sense to him. It makes no sense to me. It sounds like a James Taylor song. Like it's so <laughs> beautiful without the lyrics on top. But uh, but the tiny boy, baby boy is a total Sondheim ripoff. With with those kind of chords, like. Right, because it's a two chord jam, but the chord on top is very like it's a it's major like seven. Major seven, yeah. Well, I don't know these words you're saying. But... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, That's it's, the thing that this is why I never pursued music because all that shit I can't it, I can't get that shit. Oh yeah, that's Probably perfect. Does, but... you could. <laughs> it's just names for what you're doing. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's yeah. really all it is. <laughs> yeah. Right? Isn't that it? Yeah. It's that uh, very it goes, Sondheim-y. Uh, wait, very can I ask you something again? Because this, this name keeps coming up. What is it about that that makes it sound like Sondheim? Uh, because it sounds... Um, just sounds like... No, it's, it's Sondheim would never use like a major chord when he could do like a weird seventh chord or a second or a fourth. Like he just did interesting voicings. At End of the Woods is a lot yeah. of that kind of like... Or like, you know... You know, those kind of chords. Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't know. You would know, but <laughs> thank you. Yeah, or, or maybe this is what I was doing for. Yeah, it's that. We're in the woods. I wish. <laughs> I'm going yeah. walking. I'm in the woods. I'm looking for a little butter now. Like it's like the. It's, like, it's all that kind what of. What was shit. his like, take on the boys I'm hole? Looking thing. for a hole. Did he have a, a hole in the hole? <laughs> Any hole is for a rabbit. I don't need rabbit. So wait, but, 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 but t- take me from you finding that very Sondheimian <laughs> right hand to the call and response of, ooh, Well, that ah. was Cormac. Ooh. Tiny boy, ah. little boy, ooh. baby boy, I need you. Ah. Tiny boy, ooh. little boy, oh. I want to touch you, boy. If you only knew, 
what I'd do to you if I was that boy that's inside of you. It's also in, uh, in Walt's time. <laughs> and it's a Walt. Uh, yeah, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. I think two, if I knew three, all the things you're supposed to know, I wouldn't be able to do it. And that's Thank like you. where your dynamic comes in great. So I can be like, okay, here's some boom, 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 boom. You know, and I was like, what like, is well, Glenn doing on stage at this point? Thing. So we yeah. added these little oohs and ohs, Ooh. and he did the ah. public. <laughs> If you only knew. There's a new discovery. There's a new discovery with each. Even though you're singing them in high voice, they're deadly earnest lyrics. If you only knew what I'd do to you. If I was that boy, what's inside of you? It's inside of you. That's like 80s, like metal lyric. Like that is so earnest. That's journey. If you only knew what I'd do to you. But set against this is insane. Yes. If you've come for insane, you've come to the right place. Also, so much of what I love about this episode is, you know, those rehearsal scenes before the musical begins sets up so many jokes that pay off, like Dennis and Max switching. And then that paying off in, like, the the hug that they do that's very awkward. It's a sexually charged hug. Sexually charged embrace. (laughs) Um, But setting up those things and the D wanting to throw in a song and then having those things all, like, pay off uh, during the musical. I have a question about, did you guys write D's solo or is that... Cormac did write that, yeah, yeah. 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 Which yeah. is that we I knew we it should have some words. kind of melody. I think, I think, we, I think wrote we wrote the, words. the lyrics and then, yeah, we, and then we wrote the lyrics. We wrote I'm the lyrics. Sure. Yo, wrote I know we came tune. up with the idea of just just to be clear, like clarifying, you know, the previous song. <laughs> <laughs> and I think so I'd written me. it more like a song, like just to be clear, I did not write that song and would never have sex. With a child, <laughs> just to be clear, just to be clear. <laughs> it sounds like a Taylor Swift song. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, that. <laughs> I, I was thinking about when we were writing this, one of my concerns when we were kind of writing it was, I hope we're not, our goal here is not, we're trying to write a bad musical bad. I, I think we're trying to write a bad musical as well as we can. As well as Charlie right. can. Yeah. yeah. No, no, the muse has visited Charlie. Well, yeah, I mean, that's because there's the piece of me that is dying to be in musicals, sing songs, write songs, and then there's the piece of me that's it's too insecure to ever like really pursue it. So it's that sweet spot of like, well, if I just earnestly do it and then we make it funny then you can get away with it. But Safer. like, um, can we talk about the Troll Toll song Please. and uh, and what that is sort of modeled after? And is there like anything special about coming up with that? I mean, obviously soul and boy's soul. and Yeah, uh, boy's soul. Hall. It is a two lyric song and yet devastatingly effective. <laughs> yes, yeah. 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 You've got to pay the Troll Toll to get into that boy's soul. And then they say, what's that name? Hey, hey, hey. So how did you find the form of this thing? I just was just playing the chords I knew. And so I was like, okay, the, you know, the the major chords are the love songs and the minor chords are the bad guy, you know? So (laughs) it was, yeah, it was like as simple as like, a bluesy kind of like. Right. Uh, I heard that. I was like, oh, this is a blues, right? Boom, 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 it's boom, it's St. James boom, Infirmary, boom. right? Uh, uh, yeah, Bill and Don. Any musical, really, just saying, what'd you say? What'd you just say? Having, hey, hey, hey. Uh, yeah, what'd you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then what was what was Danny's reaction to this? How was what was his level of Danny was gung ho to do it, but he took I, a little. I, had, I, it's the craziest story, and I'll say it as quickly as possible because I, I'd met Danny a few times, but so we show up at the high school because we did this whole thing at one location. And the night before, I was nervous. I was like, what else can I give these guys to really make it click? And I thought, lyric sheets. We have the script. We have the music. Lyric sheets. Just the song, a page with lyrics. Right. So I sent that off to the second AD, and they printed them out. And I meet Danny, and we run the song once or twice. And I turn around to my piano player. I said, Let, Danny, let's do it one more time. This time. And I turn back, and he's halfway out the door. <laughs> and on his way out, <laughs> he grabs some papers off my music stand and just takes everything and <laughs> disappeared for the rest of the day and of course and i thought i i thought you were all messing with me because i swear to god every single cast member and every single crew member all day were asking me hey any more of those lyric sheets around and danny had just taking them out the door so of course danny like slays it the next day when we record cut to a year later when we did the tour 
or when we were rehearsing for the Troubadour, I go. We all went over to his house to do this first rehearsal. Uh, I bring my piano player in. Rhea like brings us into his to their piano, and they're, she's like, "Oh, you can just clear some stuff off and work here." And I remember picking up a book, and there were all the lyric sheets and music <laughs> marked up. He'd brought it home. He'd worked on it, which is uh, like, yeah, why do you I, have to take everybody's? Cup? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's just, that's just, be just a little quirks, you know? This is a, <laughs> yeah. this is a nice little. But he wanted he, us to fail. Yeah, he wanted us yeah. to fail. So he'd yeah, stand out. he's the goat, man. I mean, he like he he worked on that stuff, and he he's so amazing. He 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 like just killed that stuff. And uh, seeing that stuff at at his home, like a year later, I, I was like, oh, this is a guy. But, he, like, he also he wanted to rehearse it nude in the seventies. <laughs> yeah. 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 That's what you do. That's right. That's right. That's how you, get comfortable. I, you know, I, he was also you know one of the most delightful things about Danny is he still continues to approach things like a uh, with a youthful exuberance. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like like he's okay okay to not be necessarily the best at something as long as he's having fun he, like he he just has this like childlike you see that in the scene where he gets assigned to the troll and he's so excited yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, one of our comedy tricks is always like trying to subvert the expectation so you're expecting him to be pissed that he's going to be the troll and like offended so yeah right right the second he's, he's excited you're like well there's a joke Right. His yeah. entire social media presence is based on him taking pictures troll of foot. his feet in different locations and calling it Trollfoot in true. New York, Trollfoot in Paris. <laughs> and it's just that, that's how much he's Did embraced Did that come it. before or after the musical? That came after the musical. That was that, oh, that was, yeah, right. yeah, yeah, well yeah, after, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Daymare becomes Nightman, Danny DeVito became Troll. Yeah, he became Trollfoot. <laughs> Trollman, Trollfoot. I mean, this yeah. this episode was truly um, the first, this was our, our, our way to understand how the audience at large was experiencing the show mm -hmm. because there was no social media at the time. Right. There was no, we were making a television show. So we did nothing live. We had no indicators as to whether or not people were watching the show or enjoying it. Uh, we had no interaction with fans other than other than out on the street or like Nielsen ratings. Yeah, yeah. So the very first time we performed this um, was at the Troubadour and it was mind blowing. We had people like who knew every lyric to every song. They knew every line in the episode and they were laughing before we were delivering them. To work in television and to be able to go out and to, to perform live, mm -hmm. what a gift. What a gift that you get to see on a nightly basis how things are being received. Yeah. It's fun. Although I guess like when you're doing a play, obviously people aren't singing along. Um, have you played like some concerts or some venues where people have had the opportunity to sing along? Dude, oh, I went to a show in London of Hamilton uh, six months ago. The entire theater sang every, every single song. Oh, really? Yeah, everybody knows yeah. that. Well, that's awesome. Hamilton now. was a really interesting case because I remember when no one knew the words when we started previews <laughs> yeah, of course. And, and people were going out and sort of talking about the show and watching that front row slowly become like the live teleprompters mm -hmm. over the course of the first year because oh. we, we didn't release the cast album till like a month after we opened on Broadway. Uh -huh. mm. And that was our ambassador more than the show was. You, you know, you can only serve 1,400 people at a time mm -hmm. uh, on a given night. But then the way that album went out into the world was really like totally unexpected. And then, uh -huh. and then <laughs> it went from like, we're showing you our new show to reading on Twitter, like whatever line I fucked up that night. They're like, we saw it tonight and you <laughs> fucked up this line. Because <laughs> <laughs> they know it better than they know the downside of audience feedback. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. well, there's both sides, right. Yeah. Is there another example, <laughs> yeah. and, and uh, forgive me for not knowing, but like of the person who's writing the musicals, starring in them, like has that been, I mean, I'm sure it's been yeah. done a few times, but like what a, what? Do. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you're, you're talking like, about like, in, in, uh, in a theater yeah, setting, yeah, like, like in a like Broadway big setting. Big Broadway hits where the yeah. person is also the writer. Um, there, it, it was very much the case in the beginning of musical theater. Like George M. Cohen famously did that. Like he right. wrote Yankee Doodle Dandy and starred in Yankee Doodle uh -huh. Dandy. No, sure. um, and then there were, and now it's more of a thing, like again, like Sarah Bareilles, like went in, wrote Waitress, then went into Waitress. She's amazing in it. Um, there's a young theater writer named Shayna Taub who's like incredible and starring in her own shows. So um, yes, but it's 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 rare. Yeah. It's part of what's so electric about seeing the performance, right? It's like well, it's, yeah, but I mean, for me, the hope is always that it lives beyond me. Like well, yeah, that's, you know, that's that's the the hope is you just write something really good that lasts. Um, I love In the Heights, and I remember seeing that, and I I, I remember thinking. 
what's going to happen when this guy leaves the show? (laughs) And uh, I mean, it's a terrific show. It lives on. The movie's awesome. But I remember seeing you and thinking, what what happens when Lin Manuel leaves the the show? Yeah, I just get older and get a gun and play the Pedagogue guy. (laughs) And then when you were at a drive-in about to get into a fight, the words of the Pedagogue guy will calm you down. That's what that is what we're (laughs) listening to. You heard that story? I did hear that story. (laughs) (laughs) We're listening. We're listening to in high school. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, and it was Piragua was the song. Okay, that's right. Yeah. 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 But he heard Piragua and it brought him back. Uh, yeah. Just calmed him like, down for yeah. a second. Yeah, yeah like it's it centered me again. <laughs> that's the power. <laughs> just you thought keep scraping by. <laughs> <laughs> and that is the power of your music. Yeah. And so okay, troll toll. I want I want to hit every song toll. in this. Yes. I'm sorry. I, no, I, no, I, I, <laughs> I we have to be thorough, so thank you. Um so we've done little baby boy and just to be clear, so I think Dayman is next to talk right, about. Which was in a previous episode. Was in a previous this was episode. a reprise for it's yeah. always only fans. The whole mm-hmm. show was built around this particular song, which is really just a chorus twice, which is smart, right? <laughs> but, but wait um, a minute, but when you watch the episode, there's also <laughs> like um like you're saying other stuff, like it builds to that was Cormac. So like you've got some counterpoint going on. Yes. I don't yeah. know what Danny is, exactly is doing, but yeah. like you're doing like day man, day man, day man, day man. Yeah. Yeah. We, like you did add stuff to it. Yes. We, we, I, I just, again, it was like, what is everyone doing during this? And I, I really like <laughs> harmonic music when <laughs> everyone's doing stuff. And uh, so I just arranged it and got there on the day. And I think we cut half of it. Just, I, I overrode it. And, um, and we cut some of it. We we added. Um, cut that, cut that, cut that. I am the ruler of night and darkness. Oh, yeah. A master of wow. bird and song. A master of bird and song. <laughs> yeah. right. Master of bird. And Wait, then right. D's like, go on. You are the teacher of bird and man. A winner of contests near and far. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Winner of contests oh, yeah. near contests. and far. <laughs> master of bird and song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so right. that was kind of how we yeah. like What's wrapped up the song. I also that. like, it's not part of the song, but the lead into that uh, I really love because it's uh, that song starts the third act. And Dee gets us up to speed by saying... Uh, you once were a boy, and now you are a man, and I am in love with you. And that just gets us like past. <laughs> that's right. It's like that's the resolution. Now let's get to like yeah, the yeah, final. Yeah, but also yeah, move past it. Yeah. Yeah. That chord progression also reminds me of from the original one. It was they hate you, nightman, and you don't belong to them. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Which was me just riffing on the day when I miss your cold yeah. hands so much. <laughs> So bad. I think yeah, it's so, so bad. bad. So bad. Yeah. That voice comes back. That oh, in the, in well, the, that at the end where I come down and I sing the final song. Where I, explain the tongue in the back of your throat thing you're doing there. It, it's uh, Christopher Guest. I stole it from Christopher Guest. <laughs> it's from great. oh, from uh, from Waiting for Guffman. From a scene that I think was cut from Waiting for Guffman. So oh. it's in like one of the songs he sings in the outtakes. And he and he kind of for thing? your thoughts. Is it that one? It might have been a penny for your thoughts. Oh God, that's. <laughs> <goes, laughs> Yeah, what point? Or maybe it's in the. Penny yeah, but he's for like, your thoughts. A dime for more your yeah. dreams. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the cut stuff in Guffman is better than most musicals. Well, I mean, definitely there's a big yeah. Guffman influence in this episode, too. Right? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like the seriousness yeah. of a play, that's not good. It's very funny. <laughs> right, <Yeah>. right. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, uh, well, that transitions us into the last song, really, which is your um, proposal song. Mm-hmm. Um, where you descend, and, and quite a piece of stagecraft, too, you descending, yeah. like, it d- doesn't seem like that big of a production, and then you somehow yeah. have and a it's, sun. And it's secret. Descend. No one else yeah. knows. No, 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 no. There's a sun. No. And then Mary Elizabeth's <laughs> flipping through the, the pamphlet to be like, wait, there's another song. I, I got to say, we were done. Yeah, I thought we were done. Yeah, yeah. We were done. Uh, uh, what, now, we made a very, very, very big mistake uh, when we did the live version of this show. We thought we had to we had to stick... Uh, to the truth of the canon. And in the episode, she says no, of course, and storms out. But when you when you pack a room full of 3,000 people oh, and right. yeah. Charlie comes oh, down yes, and, the, and, she, and he's singing the song, Will You Marry Me? Will You Marry Me? We put Mary Elizabeth out in the crowd yes. and we put a spotlight on her and we had her say no. <laughs> Huge mistake. <laughs> the audience, the turned audience on her. I mean, the booze were. The, the booze, booze were. I'm surprised she didn't get ripped apart. But like they boo, were married in real fuck life. Fuck you. Yeah, they're already fuck married. You. In real life. She yeah. can't marry him. And then we did the wrong lesson. Already married. Like, even that, like, I remember the first time Mary Liz was yeah. like, "Hey guys, like, you know, they're like." Really vicious. We're <laughs> <Yeah, yeah, yeah. laughs> safe out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, all we had to do was just have her say yes. 
just have her say yes. It doesn't matter. Yeah, in we the theater, theater things in can the happen. Theater, things can happen. happen in real life. Well, that, they would have gone show. crazy. But I do love in the episode after she says no. There's a really sweet moment where Frank says to Charlie, like, "She's not worth it, man." Yeah, <laughs> I like. Like he's comforting I, I you. I thought the rape scene went really well. I thought the rape scene went really well. I'm up to here. It's a great musical, Charlie. You did a great job. She ain't worth it. Especially nobody just writes a musical for no reason. I am here. I am I am past here. And by the way, I thought the rape scene went really well. I, I, I am here. I am here with it. And that was awful for me. And if you bring this up back to the apartment tonight, I'm going to smack you. I swear to God. <laughs> well, we got to do another season of this show. We're going into season 16. Um, if you ever want to write a musical um, I for could us. Not, I would not be... possibly presume to improve on this incredible <laughs> scene. So it is Disney. It is a Disney show now, so it's all in the family. We could <laughs> call your boss. <laughs> That's what I call my boss. That's we true. could call your boss, Tommy. Is Tommy his name? Tommy. Tommy. <laughs> like, Tommy. Tommy! When you've known him as long. <laughs> <laughs> Give us Lin Manuel. <laughs> we only need him for a week now. <laughs> <laughs> Get him off the stage, Tom. Get him back at Hollywood. <laughs> Come on, let's write a song right now. These things just make sense to him. <laughs> <laughs> now we'll rap or something. You may. <laughs> Yeah. Look, you'll make one twenty-fifth of what you make now uh -huh. per week, yeah. but it'll be a lot of fun for us. Yeah, I think it'll be less than that, actually. We'll, we'll, less fun. We'll, yeah, we'll talk <laughs> less, less money. We'll, right. we'll, 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 we'll work it out. We'll work it out with yeah. Tom. Scale. And Tommy will let him know. Yes, exactly. <laughs> boss. your boss will let you your know. Boss. You don't have a boss. <laughs> yeah, I cannot tell you how mad he got when I said you don't have a boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's no one in the. I was. You don't have a boss. I was frustrated. You're Hamilton. Why are you? Why do you? You don't have a boss, man. Can I just break this down for you? You don't have a boss. And then some and he, guy he named writes Tommy really was, like, was at the drive. Is that right? Yeah. <laughs> Lin Manuel doesn't have a boss. <laughs> Let me tell you about his father's debts. <laughs> 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 but I think you're right. You did rightfully say, like, I think you're talking to yourself, man. Like, you're getting very worked That's up about it, yeah. this. And I was like, well, maybe I am. Yeah, yeah, you were, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was like... Uh, Sort of just you're ready to meet out justice. There was yeah. no one to meet out justice to. <laughs> yeah, Rob Justice was there. No Rob Justice, Rob justice, Rob justice showed situation. up at our dinner. He yes. never like, shows up when you. Who want told him you you have a boss? <laughs> <laughs> you want to write Rob Justice real quick? Come on, I know you can do it. Oh, we could do I think it. it's very telling um, <laughs> that the, somebody else who reached out um, about. Nightman, and then became a fan of the show is Bobby Lopez. Yeah, um, is a big fan of Sunny, which is really cool. Like to hear that two. I mean, Bobby is one of the other giant pillars of of musical theater yeah, right wrote now. Book of Mormon, incredible. Frozen, mm -hmm. and the fact that he really enjoys what you guys do is is awesome. He said, uh, didn't he also do Avenue Q? Yeah, I did. Yeah, that was Q. his first. Every mm -hmm. he said he'd watch Nightman Cometh every night. He was in rehearsals for Avenue Q. Oh my god! Yeah. Crazy. It's wild. It's wild. Yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, you guys, it's it's about putting on a show. Like it it hits the same sort of like pleasure centers in your brain that Guffman does. That like, yes, they may not be great at it, but they are doing their damnedest to put yeah. on a show. Just even down to the costumes, like the ill-fitting costumes, and yeah. she's going to rip the pits, but they can't because they're expensive. <laughs> no, and they have to return rental. them. Yeah. 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 Don't do the, not rip that. The cognitive <laughs> dissonance of. D dressed as like Princess Peach while holding a coffee thing. Like, yes. it doesn't yeah. make and any fucking sense. She was dressed like Princess Peach. Yeah, yeah. 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 That was always the idea, I mean, that right? Was the look. Yeah. Dressed like, uh, yeah. That princess, that's the Mario Brothers? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then the day man being symbolized with a silver, like, onesie and the cod piece. Which is a like, rollback yeah, to the original day man, with, yeah. the day man, night man. Yes. Yeah, Dennis' obsession with the. But just your little improv of taking the thing off him and being like, and now I'm a man. See? <laughs> yeah, 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 see, that yeah. little scene. Yeah. Yeah. It takes a minute to get yeah, yeah. the reveal. See, see? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, well, Len, this has been an honor to have yeah. you. Thank you. Have you here, Cormac? It's you awesome. as well. Cormac, yeah. yeah. so nice to have you. Could we play us out with some day man? Just, just a little day, day man. Just yeah. play us out. Yeah. Uh, uh, see, see ya. <laughs> 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 well, well, who's gonna sing it? Champion of the sun. Uh, 
You're a master of karate and friendship for everyone. Day man. Oh, fighter of the night man. Oh, champion of the sun. Oh, you're a master of karate and friendship for everyone. Day man. <laughs> Stage, stage freeze. <laughs> Say stage freeze. Just, Just do, it. do it. Do it. <laughs> yeah. Dayman. Ah, fighter of the night, man. Ah, champion of the sun. Ah, you're a master of karate and friendship for everyone. Dayman. Stage freeze, just do it.